Hi, everybody. My name is Eli. Uh, I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we're the yeah. Yahoo Notori YouTube channel. Yeah, all right. We had double people. This was like stereo. This was amazing. All right. There was a lot of uh, spunk in that. Eli's like going, hey, Why? hey. Why? Well, you said you weren't going to talk. Well, oh, okay. So I thought I had the intro. Well, that's okay. Hey, he started, it, and whoever starts usually runs well, the intro. Hey, we can all run the intro, man. We can all scream at the same time. We are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. Yes, we are. And thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are your family. You guys are our family. We thank you guys so much for being part of this reading, being part of our family. Yesterday was extremely wild. Um, it went from right after we did our reading uh, there was a about a three foot snake that uh, one of these snakes that uh, one bite one kill kind of snake that you don't want to get bit by. Uh, it was it came in our back door and I saw it back there. We uh, stressed slightly and um, we uh, Miss Nicole looks at me like what was that slight why why'd you look at me like that why'd, why'd you look at me woman. Yes, there was a three-foot snake that I had to kill with a hoe that I had with um, almost bare feet in my own house. Yeah, it was it was slightly stressful, and I had to get all my furry family away from the snake, first of all, so the furry family didn't get hurt. And then I had to take care of my non-furry family, and yeah, it was a very stressful situation. <clears throat> On top of that, we are dealing with uh, supposedly some kind of hurricane that uh, this country has never, ever had touched landfall before. Now we don't know if there's some geo-engineered uh, uh, hurricane on its way or not. But we know, what we do know is that we do know that our creator is very valiant to save us. That he is always there to save us and he has always saved us. He saved us from fires. He saved us from horrible investors. He saved us from all sorts of things in this world that took us to school year after year for, for many, many years. And so that is the lesson that, that we can brace basically bring to you guys is that it doesn't matter how bad it is our creator has his hand on you and he loves you he knows how many hairs are on your head he knows everything about you and this is the reason that we encourage everybody to keep the laws statutes and commandments of our creator the first five books of, of scriptures genesis exodus leviticus and numbers and deuteronomy anyone that knows our channel anyone that's ever listened to us will understand that this is the theme of what we are always speaking of there is no better way to live. There's no better way to the future. There's no other real way to the future. If we are not obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator, then by default, our daddy is Hasatan, the devil, because we are doing what he wants us to do. And if we are doing what the devil wants us to do, then we are his. And we don't want to be his. We want to be the one who is, we want to belong to the, the one who is the creator of the universe, the one who loves us so much. That not only did he give us a guidebook and tell us how to live, how to worship, how to operate, how to treat our neighbor, but he also sent his son, Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, who came and was a perfect blood-bought, born sacrifice for us, that by his blood, he broke the curse of the Torah. And I'm watching Mr. Cole over there just juggle a whole bunch of spices off the, the shelf, and she didn't make it. She got the first two, but she didn't get the third one. Good, good try. Good try, Mr. Cole. So that's all the background noise. And so, guys, that is the that is the, what we are trying to show people is that is the way forward. And the reading that we are reading today is an interesting reading. Most people have never, ever seen this. Now, Boss Clan, us, the five of us in this house, we just got done with, well, four of the five of us just got done with this gnarly, gnarly Bible project where we ended up basically putting 103 books completely back in order and we ended up with this apocrypha, and this apocrypha was in a very, very bad state. The, the, the manuscripts that we got about a year ago on this apocrypha that we've been putting together had commas in the middle of, of the, the sentences, had words that didn't belong, had stuff that, that throughout the years, I, people, I guess, put these out, but they never, ever went back through and fixed them and made them as perfect as possible. And that is what we have done. And this is the reading that we are doing today is the writings of Elijah. <clears throat> and it comes from the book of the order. And if you guys would like to purchase this, and if you guys would like to help Boss Clan, and when I say helping Boss Clan, there's not a single dime that ever goes from any of the scriptures, from anything, from any donation ever that goes to us, to our family. What this goes to is this goes to the prison ministry. This goes to putting these scriptures, this particular scriptures that you guys are reading right here into prisons, 
is putting them into prisons and into the hands of prisoners who are unable to get anything like this. And so if you guys are able to purchase this, this is how you can help us and help this prison ministry. It has 103 books in there, including the writings of um, Elijah, which we are reading right now. And it's under the, uh, or it's, uh, it's labeled Order of the Ancients. It's actually the writings of Elijah. Okay, so with that, we will begin. And before that, I need to give you guys a quick, um, this is where to download, right here. There's this, the Apocrypha has just barely been updated as of yesterday. You guys will want to grab this and you will want to get Revision 4. Revision 4 is very important to have. Um, when you guys go into this, scroll down just a little bit and go right here and make sure that you guys have Revision 4 because if you guys have the older Revision 3, there's probably we probably just got done fixing another 500 mistakes that were throughout this Apocrypha on our final read before this goes to print. So this is the final version before it goes to print. Make sure that you guys are at Revision 4 as well as Revision 4 on our main scriptures. And they are all available for free, absolutely free. Uh, it's in the description. You guys can grab these and pop them there. All right, gentlemen, are you guys ready to rock and roll on this? Let us talk briefly about what happened yesterday and what do we what what are we what kind of book are we reading here exactly? Just so we got the intro to who is the writer, who is the, who what this book's about is from Elijah. He said that um, he's making this book. He's there's a book like this before, apparently sometime before, but it's called the book of like the ancients, I think, or something like that. Order of the Ancients, yeah. There's a lot of different things that are attributed under the Order of the Ancients. And and he said that this is going to be like the guide to like priesthood. And he starts off by saying that if you want to start this off, you need to be following in the Torah. Yeah. So this book says the exact same stuff that we have always said. And it's about keeping obedience to the Torah. It's about walking with our Creator. It's about following in the, the footsteps of our Messiah. Now, as we read some of the stuff in this book, it's definitely about what you would probably call like a commune, a community group of people that have decided to hang out together. And when the kingdom comes, I believe it's going to be a lot like the kingdom come. I think it's going to be like one big family. I don't know if we'll be separated like we are now. I think it'll be like something of this. Now, as we read through this book, Please understand that these are the guidelines, these are the requirements, these are the things that if you want to be right next to Yah, if you want to be in his kingdom path, if you want to be a part of it, this is what they do and this is how they did it. This is straight out of the mouth of prophet Elijah to his cohort, to his uh, little fella, Elisha. And so what we're seeing here are things that all of us can apply to all of our lives because we want to essentially be in this, this little commune. When the times come, we want to ditch all of these worldly saintness that we're surrounded by, all of us, day and night, in every world that we're in, and we want to get with Yah's people, the people of Yah who are willing to bend their knee to a higher power that is our creator and who's willing to be obedient. And that's the thing, is some people are willing to bend their knee, but most people aren't willing to be obedient. The, the whole obedience thing just really trips people up. They're like, ah, oh, this is slavery. I'm not a slave. You know, we're sitting here in 2024 and the slave, slaves are gone. And then they're, that's what they believe is that, that this brings them into slavery when in fact the Torah brings people into freedom. And they don't understand that because they refuse to actually write this on their hearts, minds, and souls and bring it to their life. Now, here we go. Chapter 3, verse 1. Everybody ready? Yep. yep. Okay. He who loveth the truth and truly desireth to live after the order of the Shimei must declare his willingness to be united to the congregation of Yahuwah's elect and must consecrate by covenant all of his mind, all of his strength, all of his wealth to the community of Elohim so that his mind may be purified by the truth of Yahuwah's precepts, his strength controlled by Yahuwah's perfect ways and his wealth disposed of in accordance with Yahuwah's just design. <clears throat> now, for those, anybody who's read the Dead Sea Scrolls, this is what the, the Qumran guys, this is, if you wanted to join in with these guys um, that were right, I think they were right around Messiah's time. Uh, if you want to join in with them, this was part of it. You walked up to this group. You basically said, I'm part of this group. 
you take everything that you have, all your worldly possessions, it, it becomes the groups. It's controlled by the group. You, you hand it to them, and when you are accepted by them, your money becomes part of the group of money. It becomes the community's money. This is talking about things that we didn't know existed in the Dead Sea until we saw the Dead Sea Scrolls. But now that we're actually reading this book, we can see that this has always been this way, that there's always been a set of people, a really set apart people that are trying to perfect their ways in Yah. Okay, two. <clears throat> he must order his life according to the pattern which Yahuwah hath given, observing the hours of worship, the Shabbat, and the appointed times to do them, neither omitting the feast nor neglecting the fast of Yahuwah. Now, this is the same thing that we always say. And we don't say it to, to join a holy communion or a commune or anything of the sort. We say it because that is exi exactly what it says in the scriptures, right? This is talking about it. if you want to be a child of the most high, this is the recipe for it, right? All of us right here, we don't have to join a commune, but, what it, but we need to follow the rest of the stuff. We must order our life according to the pattern of Yahuwah, which he hath given. Observing hours of worship, we need to observe the Shabbat, the appointed times to do them. And it also says, neither omitting the feast, uh, feast nor neglecting the fasts of Yahuwah. And there's a lot of fasts of Yahuwah. How many fasts of Yahuwah are there, Mystical? I think there's four. Four. There's four fasts that we are supposed to be doing throughout the year. And so Actually, those... Five if you count the... Five if you do uh, the Day of Atonement? Yeah. Five, okay, so that's what we are talking about. These are the things that we've already been told to do. And so these, this is not new, really. It's just there's a couple things that are different than what we know. Let's continue on. He must be one. And again, it, for all of us, this goes to all of it, you guys. So if it says he must be one, it's, it, you must be one whose heart is knit unto the ordinances of Elohim's Torah who will strive diligently to pursue them in purity, neither breaking the Torah, changing the ordinances, nor neglecting the everlasting covenants of our Elohim. This is the exact same thing that Torah says. This is the same thing the scripture says. Anyone else have anything? You guys are real quiet today. Jade, you sick? Uh, you going to make it? Yeah, I'm fine. Let's go. What else? What do you got for this? Uh, I don't have a lot. I mean, just talking about keeping the Torah and up top. Is about, any of this new? Not, you know, Yehoshua talked about uh, giving rid of your wealth. And um, if you wanted it, because the rich man, he was a, he was Torah keeping. He was a good person. But he's like, you're rid of your wealth because you have too much wealth. To you you care about that more than you do about the kingdom. So Absolutely. It's something that Yehoshua talking about, get rid of the wealth. Yeah, and, and that's the thing here. And, and people aren't going to want to get rid of that. If you are, if these guys, these guys were like the holy of holies. These guys were the guys that were willing to give all their possessions away and follow Yah in such a way. Okay, four. When such a man cometh forward to present himself as a candidate for admission into the order, he should be examined carefully by the elders of the community. And having been proven worthy, he must enter into a Kadesh, enter into a covenant with the presence of Elohim. The Kadesh messengers and his brethren of the order by entering into the waters of immersion that he will do according to all that Elohim hath commanded and not turn away from the service of Yahuwah through the fear of wicked men or evil spirits, nor through discouragement because of the trials of Belial, shall be, which Belial shall send up against him. For Yahuwah Elohim of our fathers hath appointed that all who seek to live after his Kodesh order shall be tried and purified until their gold is pure and their dross consumed. Uh, now, so this is where that was all, comes from. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> we had, until, in, unless you have a book like this, you do not hear about immersion until we hear about the, the New Testament. I guess it makes more sense why this is, that's John the Baptist, like, 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 come back as, like, uh, yeah, a light, yeah, uh, he yeah. Was doing baptism, this is what he's talking about here, like, purifying the people. It, yeah, no, that makes a lot, that's a very, very good point, Kate. This is what, this is the stuff that we didn't know. When we read the story in, in, of John the Baptist, John the Immerser, we didn't know why he started baptizing people. We, we didn't know. We, we, it just, it, it seemed new to us because we didn't have the rest of these scriptures that let us know this was the way they were doing it, right? They were immersing people. Once you have made this commitment, once you have made this, this stand that you are going to be with our creator, then this is the path forward that, that these guys had to deem you um, part of this click. And it is, it is a, it is a interesting click, right? It's, it's a very interesting, it's the holy guys boys club essentially. 
And it's not even just boys club. This is a girls club. This isn't, this is a human club, right? This isn't just for the men. This is anybody who wants to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments has this kind of world upon them that we can become a child of the most high. Two, when a man entered into this covenant in, in the waters of immersion, the elders of the community are to lay their hands upon his head and barack him with the Ruach HaKodesh of Elohim. And again, <clears throat> this is stuff we, we had not heard until the New Testament, right? We, we did not hear about immersion and um, people laying on their hand, hands on their head under an immersion of things of the sort. This is, this is new stuff that we are able to see that the, the New Testament is really the Old Testament revealed and the, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And between the two of them, it's all one big book and it, including these apocrypha. All right, so let's roll on to five, and then we'll end it after this. Real quick, on uh, the end of that, we're still talking about laying the hands on the heads. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the priests, when they would uh, kill uh, the lamb, they'd all put their hands on it and bless it. So I think this is something similar to that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right on that. Um, the laying on of the heads and the hands of the head, and that's how they would kill the animal, right? That they would lay the hands on the head, and as they, I think they cut the throat, um, <clears throat> is how they made that happen. All right, anyone else have anything? Eli? No. You sure? Yep. That's a lot of info you've produced for us so far. Are you going to produce any more? Nope. All right. All right. We'll leave it at that then. Okay, five. At the end of each year, every member of that community is to be interviewed from first to last that the spiritual standing of each in the community may be determined. Kind of like a yearly review, like at your job. You're like, all right, how was your yearly review? Well, how are you feeling doing your job? Yeah, yearly review. What this does is this gets rid of the uh, tears, right? Because you will have people that come in and they will be on fire. And you see that in the Torah community. You see people that are on fire. You see them rocking and rolling. And then you see them fall away from faith. And then you see them turn even further. And they are anti-Yah and they're anti-Messiah. And they, um, they essentially are, um, they're, they're not, they're, they just to turn 180 degrees. Two. This is needful, so as long as Belial continues to hold sway as the Elohim of this world. Now, this translation is a little bit different because Belial, we don't have this in regular scriptures, this word Belial. Um, it's like darkness or like wickedness. Saint, yeah, it's, saint, it's Satanist. I think it's, it's, it's darkness, uh, wickedness. Um, this is a capital, so this one's talking about Satan himself. This is talking and, and also um, continues to sway as the Elohim of this world, right? And so there are lowercase Elohims, right? There's not just Elohim most high, but we have lowercase Elohims and they're, they're mighty ones, right? Something of that sort. And so, uh, but they're not good mighty ones. They're evil ones. Three, the object of this interview is that every man in Yisrael may be aware, made aware of his status in the community of Elohim's elect, that he may measure himself against the perfect eternal society of the Shimei. If any man finds that he is being governed by a law which is beyond his desires, then let him be placed among those who live after his own heart. So this is what we hear from the Christians, right? It's the same thing. Like we're under the law, we're under bondage. He, he's like, put him, put, him, put him with the rest of the world. Put him. Well, you, you hit it right on the first part of that, that the, the Christians are governed by a law which is beyond their desires, right? Their law. What is the law of the Christians? Uh, do what you want. Do what you will. Yeah, do as you do as you wish. Um, as long as it doesn't fall. Well, they, they have the Ten Commandments, but then they don't keep Shabbat, so they only have the Nine Commandments. We shouldn't say it's the Ten Commandments. Um, and, you know, if you start judging them based upon that, they might even get like a 60, 70% on that. So that's all the commandments they have, right? Do as thou wilt. It's it's Aleister Crowley's um, motto, right? The, 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 the master Satanist of them all, one of the most greatest evil dudes of all, his motto, which he set off with the Freemasons, with all these evil people, is do as thou wilt, right? And that's the guy that had, he was into sex magic, he was into all this evil stuff, he, uh, he murdered tons and tons of young children. Aleister Crowley was just a very, very evil dude. And, you know, who is the uh, granddaughter of Aleister Crowley is Barbara Bush. Most people didn't actually know that. But, yeah, they're, that whole, the whole Satanist and demonology and all of the, these, these so-called um, people that are in power are all related. They're all the same bloodline. Probably some sort of reptiles or something. But yeah, I'm, not, we're off track. I'm not going there. Okay, here we go. <laughs> if any man, okay, so five. If any man will qualify himself to live a Torah higher than he is living... Let the opportunity be given to him to live that Torah. Thus, no man in Yisrael need to be abased below his ability 
to qualify nor exalted above his desires to live after the pattern of the Shimei. Thus, all members of the community will stand, each in his proper place, according to his true evaluation of his standing before Elohim. Let those who judge in these matters judge according to correct principle, in profound humility, being full of charity and equity toward their brethren and sisters, that the society of the Shimei may flourish among you, being sanctified by love and unity in Yahuwah or Elohim. And that's a huge thing right there, right? Love and unity. We don't, it's, it's hard to find that, right? It's hard to find Yah loving people that are in unity with the word and the wills and the ways of our creator. So gentlemen, what do you guys make of this book so far as we are here? Uh, it seems good. Nothing seems out of like, out of like crazy town, but nothing seems crazy. It's just uh, how you should live your life. How you should, if you are in a community of Torah keepers, how would you do it? How would you keep the place holy? How would you keep the place cleansed from wickedness? Yeah, and how would you not let you know people in that are getting bitter or getting they lose their way and they you know they start polluting the rest of the people? It has a place to to get them in. Now it doesn't here in our house. This is we kind of live in this kind of commune, right? This is the kind we live in a Torah keeping commune. If somebody here in this house is doing something outside of Torah, they're going to get beat, right? We're going to take any. It doesn't matter who it is, me, wife, uh, kids. If one of us, I mean, we start doing stuff outside of Torah, it will be a huge deal in this house. Like, can you guys imagine if I brought you guys home a, a pork loin, right? What would you guys do? That'd be, very, that'd be a very awkward situation. It would be awkward, right? Because we know we can't eat it, but then we know we shouldn't be touching the stuff. And then, we, you know, the best we could do is give it to our dogs. But, you know, that's the kind of things. You guys you guys wouldn't just look at me and start eating the pork loin, right? Would, yeah. any, would anybody here eat the pork loin? No. no. Are you sure? I could dress it up and make it look really good. No. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, because there's ham sandwiches that are real, real good, but we shouldn't be eating them. So with that, everybody, <clears throat> we thank you guys very much for hanging out with us and with our discussion. We're always crazy here. We're always going all over the place. Hope you guys forgive us if we ever offend you. Hope you guys love us if we uh, mess up. We do definitely love you guys, and please keep us in your prayers. As we are finishing up this Bible project, Hasatan is obviously trying to get our family killed. And so it is a very dangerous environment we live in. And the biggest thing that we want to do right now is get this Bible project completely done. And Miss Nicole is finalizing kind of things. We've already paid the people in, in India. The um, All we got to do is get them the final print, which Miss Nicole is going to have inside of about a week. And you guys have that final print in front of you. You guys can download it. It's on the PDFs right now. It's completely free. And for anybody that does want to purchase these and, and have a hard copy of this, these Bibles are very, very nice. It's 14.5 font. It's large print. It is a beautiful, beautiful copy. It has three bookmarks as well. And so uh, it's going to be a blessing. So thank you so much, everybody. We love you. Have a wonderful day. All right, shalom.